RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents Transcribe, the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Nick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. In the old days, going to a dentist was an ordeal. But today, with modern dental techniques, a visit to the dentist is nothing to dread. Except to Phil Harris. He's still living in the dark ages. And he considers a visit to his dentist like going to see Bella Lugosi. More about that later. First, a word from RCA Victor. What style of interior decoration do you prefer? Would you give your living room the warmth and grace of French provincial? Would you do it in ultra-smart, sophisticated modern? Or would you choose something in between? Well, whatever your taste in decoration, remember this. Your television set will be the most looked-at piece of furniture in the room. With this in mind, RCA Victor has created the greatest selection of truly beautiful cabinets in its history, a choice of 42 different combinations of styles and finishes. Within this wide selection, you're sure to find sets that seem to have been custom-designed for your particular room. The new RCA Victor Prentice, for example, may be one of them. This 21-inch console model blends Regency with contemporary styling in a charming bow front cabinet. And the beautiful Prentice is available in your choice of mahogany or limed oak finish. See the great new line of RCA Victor television receivers at your dealers tomorrow. They're America's most beautiful sets, yet prices start as low as $199.95. And when you buy one of the new RCA Victor television sets, you can enjoy America's finest installation and maintenance through an RCA Victor factory service contract. This exclusive factory service is another reason why, every year, more people buy RCA Victor than any other television. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Going to a dentist affects many people in many different ways. Some don't mind, others are timid, and still others are scared stiff. But Phil Harris reacts in a way all his own. Two minutes ago, he received a phone call from the dentist reminding him of an appointment this afternoon. And now as we look in, he is telling Alice about it. I ain't gonna go. I ain't let no dentist pull my cute little baby teeth. They're the only thing I got left of my youth. Ain't that the truth, though? <laughs> oh, Phil, don't be a sissy. There's nothing to going to a dentist. I've never seen such a big baby. It's easy for you to talk. I'm scared, and I'm not... Hey, wait a minute. What am I afraid of? I just remembered. He didn't say the appointment was for me. You see, you got all upset over nothing. Who was the appointment for? You. And you were... Me! Oh, oh, Phil I don't want to go to the dentist I'm afraid Afraid of the dentist? <laughs> I'm surprised at you Only cowards are afraid How come all of a sudden You're so brave? Because all of a sudden I ain't the one who's got to go <laughs> Honey, you got nothing to be afraid of The dentist just wants you down for a cleaning I know, I know But when I get down there He'll find something wrong He'll want to drill or... Pull a tooth Nonsense There's nothing wrong with your teeth Let me look at them Come in Come on, honey Open your mouth and let me see All right Open a little wider uh, Hi, Curly Hi, Elliot Hmm Very interesting What are you doing, Curly? Looking in Alice's mouth <laughs> What's the matter? Your television set going to blink? <laughs> Mind if I take a peek? No, be my guest. <laughs> Open your mouth wider, honey, so we can see your teeth. Uh, uh. Curly, why are we looking at her teeth? Never mind. Open wider, honey. Uh. Yeah, uh. they look good to me. Nice and sound. You've got teeth like a two-year-old. Hadn't she, Ellie? Yeah. Her fetlocks ain't bad either. <laughs> 
course, she's a little sway back, but with a padded saddle and a light jockey, you'll never notice it. <laughs> she does have ankles like Native Dancer, doesn't she? Uh, you can stop now. Honey, I'm only doing it to get your mind off of going to the dentist. Oh, that's why you're looking at her teeth. Yes, I have to go to the dentist, and, and I'm afraid. Oh, that's ridiculous. There's nothing to be afraid of. What do you have to have done to your teeth? Well, I... I have to go down and have them cleaned. And, and I don't want to go. Oh, now, Alice. <laughs> if you don't want to go to the dentist, you don't have to. I'll take care of everything for you. You will? Sure. You just give me your teeth. I'll go have them cleaned and bring them back. <laughs> to stop. I certainly will. Elliot, you ain't going out of this house with my wife's teeth. <laughs> I ain't gonna have her walking around here with a nude mouth. <laughs> gumming her way through dinner and oh. gumming her. No, I don't have false teeth. Oh, I didn't say you did. I was gonna pull them all out, have them cleaned, and then glue them back in again. <laughs> well, you don't have to go to all that trouble, Elliot. Hers are on a zipper. <laughs> Every night, zip, and they're out. One night, her tongue got caught in the zipper, and for two weeks, she was talking like Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> like then, she says, now move over there, because I don't want to pull it well, down. Well, I'm warning you. If you, do, if you don't quit, I'm... I... Well, look, Alice, I'm just making a joke of it. I'm doing it for your own good. Yeah, we're just trying to get your mind off this horrible ordeal you gotta go through. That does it. I'm not gonna go. Honey, will you stop paying no attention to him? It's not an ordeal. But, Phil, I'm gonna be scared. I'll that. tell you what. Elliot and I will go with you to comfort you. He'll hold your hand, and I'll sing to you. Well, all right, I'll go. Good. Now, come on, honey. I'll drive you down to the dentist in my car. I'll sing to you on the way down. Now, you go put on your hat and coat, and I'll go out in the car and get the band out of the glove compartment. <laughs> Love compartment. I used to keep them in the radiator, but they drank all the antifreeze. <laughs> possibilities, possibilities. We're living in a world that's full of possibilities. Ain't no miracle too impossible for anyone who sees the possibilities. If you recall your history, then you will find that all its famous men turned out to be the kind of men who never stopped to look behind they looked ahead to see what they could see and they saw possibilities possibilities they never overlooked a single possibility proven naturally opportunity is for the one who sees the possibilities each time we try to solve a new phenomenon the skeptics say it's just a dream i know but after you're a hero and the job is done, then you can tell them all I told you so. Yes, there are possibilities, possibilities. If you will only make the most of your facilities, folks will idolize, even eulogize the little guy that sees the possibilities. When Christopher Columbus proved the world was round, he called Queen Isabel on his return. She said, now tell me, Chris, about this place you found. He said, well, Bell, as far as I'm concerned, it sure got possibilities, possibilities. I tell you, Queen, I've never seen such possibilities. And I really feel we should make a deal before somebody sees its possibilities. When little Abe was growing up in Illinois, to be a big success was his intent. Studied so much harder than the other boys Till one day he became our president He saw the possibilities, possibilities He never overlooked a single possibility Proven naturally, opportunity Is for the one who sees the possibilities I guess by now there ain't no doubt About the point I'm bringing out So if you'll open up your eyes you are bound to recognize the possibilities, possibilities. We're living in a world that's full of possibilities. Ain't no miracle too impossible for anyone who sees the possibilities. Well, 
I'm getting cold feet. The closer I get to the dentist's office, the more scared I get. Alice, I think the reason you're afraid is that you have no confidence in your dentist. May I make a suggestion? What? Why don't you go to my dentist? Oh, that's all she needs, your dentist. What's wrong with my dentist working on her teeth? I'd rather have her bite into an electric fan while it's going. <laughs> now, just a moment. My dentist happens to be an expert. He's done all the work on my teeth. Hey, look at him. How do they look? Real sharp. <laughs> he filed them all to a point nicely. <laughs> needn't be sarcastic. He also put this gold cap on my front tooth. How's that look? <laughs> Rather rural. <laughs> kind of abnerish of lemon abnerish. When you smile, it looks like a sunrise over a picket fence in Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> All right, Curly. Hey, here's the building my dentist is in. Let's go in, huh? Say, that's a coincidence. My dentist is in this building, too. Alice, I wish you'd change your mind and see my boy. I guarantee he's absolutely Look, you can painless. forget it. I am not going to let Alice hey, go... Wait a minute, Phil. Wait a minute. Elliot, did you say he was guaranteed absolutely painless? Guaranteed. You'll love him. You'll have a lot of confidence in this man. Everybody has confidence in this man. She wants a dentist, not a confidence man. <laughs> Don't be a wise guy. Dr. Hertz is a very good dentist. <laughs> Dr. Hertz? Yeah, you must have heard of him Dr. O.O. O. Hertz <laughs> I know I'm a fool for asking this But what does the O.O. O. stand for? Ouch, ouch I know <laughs> No, I was only kidding, Alice His first name is Oscar And I promise you, you won't feel a thing When this man takes care of your teeth He's very gentle Well, it won't do any harm to see what he's like Where's his office? It's right down the corridor here someplace It's one of these offices <laughs> Here's his office Very gentle, huh? What's the patient screaming for? I can't understand it. Doctor, stay away from me. Don't you dare come near me. Stay away, I say. You'll never catch me. Look at her go. <laughs> Beady little thing, ain't she? That doctor's pretty fast on his feet, too. I think he'll catch her. <laughs> Elliot, what kind of a doctor is this? Chasing his patient down the hall. Now, don't get excited. She's not a patient. She's his nurse. <laughs> He's always chasing her around the office. <laughs> yes. Oscar is a fun-loving fellow. <laughs> Now then, Alice, would you care to step into his office and wait until he returns from the chase? Get away from me. I'm going now, home. Now, wait a minute. No, you're not. Now, you're going up and see your dentist. Now, come on. Let's get in the elevator and go up to Dr. Brannigan's office. Now, oh, please, Mrs. Harris, for the last time, if you want me to examine your teeth, you'll have to open your mouth. Please open your mouth. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> Mr. Harris, I've had your wife in the chair for a half hour and she refuses to open her mouth. Does she act like that at home, too? Doesn't she ever talk? Are you kidding, Clyde? <laughs> She's a regular chatterbox. All the time, it's yadda ta yadda ta yadda ta yadda ta Yeah, her mouth's always gone. <laughs> Last week, she was down at the beach and she talked so much her tongue got sunburned. <laughs> Dentist joke. I thought it would. Be <laughs> this is all very amusing, but I'm a very busy man. Uh, Mrs. Harris, once more, will you please open your mouth? Mm -mm. <laughs> Mrs. Harris, I'll prove I'm not going to hurt you. I'll show you what I'm going to do to your teeth. Now, Mr. Harris, will you sit in this other chair here and open your mouth so I can show your wife what I am going to do to her teeth? Okay, Doc. 
Who, me? Yes, you. Oh, you must have a leaky gas line. <laughs> you forgot to light the jet, bud. You've been sniffing that stuff and don't know it. Please sit down, Mr. Harris. Go get yourself another boy. I ain't gonna be no shill for no chopper chipper. <laughs> Mr. Harris, I'm not... a uh, chopper chipper. Suppose that means something, but I don't have time to figure it out now. Now, uh, Mr. Harris, just please sit in the chair. I'm not going to do anything to you. All right, all right. But if you promise not to hurt me. I promise. I wouldn't do anything to bruise a little old cream puff like you. <laughs> just sit still and open your mouth. I asked. That's a good book. Now, you see, Mrs. Harris, I'm just going to look into your mouth like I'm looking into Mr. Harris's mouth right now and see... Uh, well, what have we here? I don't know, and I ain't hanging around to find out. So long, Doc. Take care of yourself. Brush your teeth twice a day, and don't forget to take them out every night. Come on, <laughs> sit down and open your mouth. I want to take another look at that wisdom tooth. Now, let me see. Oh, am I going to get a fee for this one? What's the matter, Doc? Do I have a cavity? Cavity? This is a regular Carlsbad cavern. <laughs> oh, I'll have to pull this one, I'm afraid. That makes two of us. Now, look, Doc, as long as we're both afraid, let's forget the whole thing. Well, I'll have to pull this one right now. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing about? I can't help it. Hey, Doc, isn't this funny? Mrs. Harris came up to have her teeth looked at, and he ends up having his tooth pulled. <laughs> yes, it is funny. I, 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 uh, Mr. Lewis, would you mind laughing again? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> and, uh, just a, a little wider, please. I'll be glad to. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, what are you looking at? Your teeth. Mrs. Harris, you'll have to get out of the chair. This one's an emergency. I'm going to have to extract. A few teeth. <laughs> Which ones? Just the upper row. <laughs> Doctor, you mind if I say something? No, what? How would you like a sock in the snoot? <laughs> Curly, what'd you and your wife get me into? <laughs> This really is funny. If he hadn't laughed at Mr. Harris, I wouldn't have seen how bad his teeth are. <laughs> this is really a scream, isn't it, Mrs. Harris? <laughs> oh, ho, ho. Very funny. But you're not going to get me to open my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, shall we get started? Which one of you is going to be first? She, she is. is. No, 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 not Mrs. Harris can wait. Harris, I think I'll take you first. Well, I'd love to, Doc, but you see, I haven't got time now. I have a four o'clock appointment to have my appendix removed. And I don't want to keep the doctor waiting. Yeah, I'll go with him. Well, why do you have to go with him? I'm his doctor. Yeah? <laughs> you better hurry, doctor. The pains are coming closer now. You think we're in time? Oh, don't worry. I have my pocket knife with me, and we'll take the appendix out in the elevator on the way down. <laughs> oh, that sounds like fun. Oh, on, sit right. down, you fool. <laughs> now, come on, Harris. Open your mouth. Now, wait a minute, doctor. Please, please. Don't you touch me. Will you me. stop you go away from around me. like that? You're going to... <laughs> Mr. Harris... Why did you kick me in the stomach? <laughs> I don't know. It seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> and I'll do it again if you come near me. Well, if you won't sit still, there's only one thing to do. Doc, look, I tell you that I don't want to have... What are you doing? Strapping you to the chair. Oh, no. Look, Ellie, he's got me strapped to the chair. Don't worry, Curly. He hasn't shaved your head yet. <laughs> Besides, I'm keeping the telephone open to the warden's office, and if the governor calls with a reprieve for you, we'll have you home. Doc, what are you... Hey, what are you doing? I'm strapping you in, too. <laughs> Your teeth need attention. I'm going to see that you get it. Dr. Brannigan, are you going to pull their teeth now? Yes, but I'd better not do it. The way I feel about these two jokers, I'm liable to do something I'll regret later. I'll let my associate pull their teeth. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go in and tell him to get ready. Hey, look, Doc, you can't do this, Doc. Hey, Alice, don't let him pull my tooth. You know I can't stand pain. Oh, come now, fellas. Remember what you told me about being a baby? Just relax and I'll sing to you. I don't feel like hearing you sing. Force yourself, because you're going to hear it anyway. Oh. <laughs> Your 
You're the cream in my coffee. You're the salt in my stew. You will always be my necessity. I'd be lost without you. You're the starch in my collar. You're the lace in my shoe. You will always be my necessity. I'd be lost without you. Most men tell love tales, and each phrase dovetails. You've heard each known way. This way is my own way. You're the sail of my love boat. You're the captain and crew. You will always be my necessity. I'd be lost without you. We're not good poets, how well we know it. We've never been great ravers. But when we speak of you, we rave a bit, it's true. Our heads are turning, and just from learning your estimation of us, what sugar does for tea, that's what you do to me. You give life savor, bring out each flavor. So this is clear, dear. You're my Worcestershire, dear. You're the sail of my love boat. You're the captain and crew. You will always be my necessity. I'd be lost without you. Doctor, I came out here to ask you something. Is it going to hurt Mr. Harris when he has his tooth pulled? No, it won't hurt a bit. My associate is an excellent extractionist. Oh? Who is your associate? A young man I just took into my office. I expect him any minute. Hiya, Doc. Here I am. Oh, no, it can't be. Doctor, Julius isn't your associate, is he? No, of course not. Hi, Miss Faye. Hello, Julius. What are you doing here? I came to pick up my father. He's having all my mother's teeth pulled. <laughs> your father's having your mother's teeth pulled? Yeah, they're in his leg. <laughs> <laughs> they had a fight last night and she bit him. <laughs> what are you doing here, Miss Faye? Well, I'm waiting for Mr. Harris and Mr. Lewis. Poor fellas are inside. You see, they're going to have a lot of teeth pulled. Oh, isn't that splendid? <laughs> Like yellow bellies. They're afraid to have their teeth pulled. In that case, don't pull them. Just kick them out. <laughs> <laughs> it's one at a time. Start on the back nine, and when you've got 18 holes... Oh, now, please. I'm not pulling their teeth. My associate is. Ah? Uh, have they met your associate yet? No, they've never seen him, but I... Say no more. I'll take it from here. Doctor, you don't mind if I go in and, um... Uh, Cheer them up, do you? I know. Go right ahead. Thanks. Now, Julius. Julius, I don't want you to scare them. I don't want you to make them nervous. I ain't gonna make them nervous. When I get through them, they'll be gibbering idiots. <laughs> <laughs> and not a going to visit me patients. I guess you're right, Curly. We're acting like a couple of babies. There's nothing to having a tooth pulled. Nah. I bet it don't even hurt. Take that bet. <laughs> and seeing as I'm the one who's gonna pull him, I'll give you a tenth of one. It's the Green Hornet. <laughs> Julius, nobody asked you to come. Hold it. What do you mean you're the one who's gonna pull him? You're waiting for the doctor's associate, ain't you? Yes, we are. Well, guess who the doctor's associate is? Oh, no. Oh, yes. Fellas, those straps the doctor's got on you, are they too tight? Certainly they're too tight. We can't even move. We can't even lift our arms. Good. Now that everything's battened down securely, we'll proceed with the slaughter. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute, kid. These are our teeth. You can't pull them if we don't want you to. Yeah, I guess you should have a say in the matter. Now then, all those who don't want their teeth pulled, raise their right hand. <laughs> Defeated. 
I'll start with you, Mr. Harris. Open your mouth and tell me which tooth I'm supposed to pull. I ain't gonna tell you which one. In that case, I'll just go in and take pot luck. <laughs> now, open your mouth so I can pull it, too. I'm not gonna open my mouth. Now, what are you gonna do about it? There's only one thing I can do. I'll drill a hole through the top of your head and take the tooth out of the hard <laughs> way. <laughs> or would it be better if I drilled up through the chins? Nah, that would take too long. You got too many of them. <laughs> Julius, look. I, I got it. I'll go through the ear. There's a hole already started there. <laughs> oh, never mind. I'll open my mouth. Too late. I'm taking the ear root. <laughs> look, you sadistic little beast. Stop your kidding. Who's kidding? Now hold still while I pull your teeth. The Yanks aren't coming, the Yanks aren't coming The knives are hurting everywhere Two, three, here's one here There's one there There are teeth coming out everywhere Will you shut up, Julius? <laughs> I can't stand any more of this My, my, you are a high-strung patient You just relax while I wake up my other patients Now, Mr. Lewis now Get away from me, you ain't gonna pull my teeth Oh, I have no intention of pulling your teeth, Mr. Lewis. Oh, you haven't? No. I'm going to drill holes in them and they'll fall out by themselves. <laughs> Get away from me. You're going to love the drill. It's a very pleasurable experience, especially the sound. When that drill meets the tooth and goes... Oh, Julius, please. Hey, I can't stand Neither can I, kid. Oh, them pains. Oh, Julia, don't. All right, fellas. I guess you had enough. You can quiet down now. I ain't going to touch your teeth. You're not? Of course not. I ain't no dentist. Dr. Brannigan's associate, Dr. Bach, is gonna do the job. So you see, you got nothing to worry about. Well, thank goodness. As long as a real dentist is gonna do it, it's... it. Hey, kid, tell me something. Um, which one is the best dentist, Brannigan or Barker? It's a toss-up. In my opinion, butcher boy Brannigan is just as good as bloody Barker. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Whether you're off on a vacation or just staying around home, you can listen to all your favorite records easier and better with RCA Victor's automatic three-speed portable phonograph. This remarkably compact Victrola is styled along luggage lines, has a comfortable handle for easy carrying. Take it to the shore, to the mountains, play it anywhere there's an AC outlet. It plays all records, all three speeds. The center's the secret. Load up to 14 45 extended play records on the large slip-on spindle. Press a button and relax to almost two hours of music. You can also play your 78 or long play records with the same automatic ease. You'll enjoy concert hall tone at every speed because this portable Victrola has RCA Victor's famous golden throat tone system. First chance you get, see and hear the automatic three-speed Victrola portable phonograph at your RCA Victor dealers. Hi, this is Phil again. Spring is here, and the call of the open highway beckons to millions of motorists. Once again, the National Safety Council asks you to drive safely, carefully, and to keep alert. Take your tip from the professional truck driver, and remember that driving is a full-time job. Slow down for safety's sake. The life you save may be your own. Thanks, and good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Included in this program transcribed were Julie Bennett and Joseph Kern. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. There's music to match most every mood in RCA Victor's series of mood music albums. Hugo Winterhalter and his orchestra play music for romancing, music for reminiscing. Sixteen wonderful selections in all, including such favorites as Penthouse Serenade, Deep Purple, Always, and These Foolish Things. Listen to the new Hugo Winterhalter Mood Music albums on Long Play Records or on the exciting new 45 Extended Plays at your RCA Victor record dealers now. Next, hear Theater Guild on the air over NBC.